um, register from all over the shop. But I appreciate that this is never going to be a good time for anybody and, and unless uh, I don't know where it would be a good time for you. Um, but um, and it's not a content led session, so you're not going to be learning about the secret tricks of lean. Mind you, John's here, so he'll sprinkle some magic, I bet. Um, but the aim really is to look back positively on some of the achievements that the network's done over the past year and look forward to some of the things that we have ahead of us over the next. Um, you might ask, what year are we talking about? We don't know. We just do this <laughs> at a random point in the year where we choose and we kind of get up to. Um, but it is genuinely lovely to, to see you all here. Um, if you've not been introduced, my name is Steve Yorkstone um, or Stephen Yorkstone. I work in Edinburgh Napier University. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the chair of Lean HE Global and helped set it up with many friends on this call right now. I'm looking at you, Tammy. Um, and so we've been... I think for about the past 10 years, Lean HG as a community of practice has been growing. Um, and we started out with a bunch of practitioners sitting around talking about how we needed to have some development opportunity, how we needed to be able to connect with each other. And the community has grown and developed and supported people in universities to do, to do lots of cool stuff over the past 10 years and we'll reflect on some of that today. Um, we also need to do a little bit of business, a little bit of the boring stuff, but we'll but we'll sort that out and I'll make sure that Suzanne keeps me straight and ensures that I won't that I won't um, cause any trouble. Well, well, um, <laughs> I'm ready um, to stop you whatever it is I've got to stop you doing. Just make sure that I <laughs> that we do the formal <laughs> governance bit that yes. we need that we need to do because I mean, well, do you want to introduce yourself Suzanne? Yes certainly I'm Suzanne Clark I work at Bournemouth University down the south coast of the United Kingdom and um, I'm a sort of lean practitioner not anywhere near as learned and lean as all my colleagues here and I first met Steve, John, well Tammy I knew a bit longer probably near the beginning of lean HE I don't think I was there right at the inaugural discussion. And yeah, really pleased and proud to have been part of this group and seen how much it's grown and um, made so many friends across across the globe. So I act as deputy chair, so helping Steve, keeping him on the straight and narrow, but I also look after the governance aspects of Lean HE and we'll go through the governance at some point today. And it's a relatively easy task for me to do that because there's certain things that we don't do as a, a global committee. We don't hold a budget and we don't have formal members. But before I start rambling on about governance, I'll, I'll um, hand back to Steve. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, um, we, uh, I, I'm hoping that Ruth Archer, Dr. Archer, who is the chair of our Americas division, will be joining us um, part way through the call. Um, but we are um, delighted to be joined. Welcome, Tracy. Um, oh, you've come off on camera. That's fine. You don't need to stay on camera. Oh, and you're back on like a yo-yo. <laughs> um, we're doing introductions. Um, hello. Um, um, let me introduce Melissa, um, who's... Uh, well, you introduce yourself, Melissa. Tell us about yourself. Oh, gosh, it's very early in the morning to be doing this. Hi. So I'm Melissa <laughs> Hankinson. I'm from the University of Canberra in Australia. Um, I'm the chair of the uh, Asia Pacific Network. Um, so at University of Canberra, I lead our service experience and improvement team. And I think I first connected with Lean HU when the conference was hosted by Macquarie University in Australia, which I think from recollection was like 2018, maybe 2017, 2018. I don't know. I've also lost track of time, Suzanne. I, so I think 17. today is Friday. Yeah, 20, oh, 2017. God, you're aging me further, John. <laughs> um, so that's me. Thank you. Um, also um, chairing our, one of our Continental Divisions is John. Hello, everyone. I, I know most of you. Um, John Hogg, 
uh, Chair of Lean HE Europe, um, Director of Continuous Improvement at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, um, and I'm responsible for um, the Continuous Improvement area um, and also the um, Programme Management Office. Nice. Thank you, John, and thank you for the comment in chat, Tracy. That's perfect. We're going to be doing a little bit of a chat from us. Um, whilst we're doing that, put stuff in chat, and we'll open up to the floor once we've gone and talked a little bit about uh, the things that we need to, we'd like to update you on. Um, so that's the kind of the continental divisions, which form a lot of how many people will interact with the work that Lean HE does. And we'll hear a little bit more from John and Melissa shortly. But many people get in touch with Lean HE through our conferences, um, through the Lean, the Lean HE International Conferences. And we have two conference hosts with us here. Um, Alyssa, hello, welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, did you want me to give an intro or just a hello is enough? Whatever you would like to do, my darling. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say, um, so I was the conference host um, this you know, last year. Um, unfortunately, wasn't there on the day, so I didn't get to meet most of you, but um, kind of led the organisation of it. So nice to meet you here. Which means that essentially Alyssa put in all of the hard work and then missed the fun um so uh what we what we really what we made on this as boss do is promise that she'd sent her to san diego uh, fingers crossed um where it's we'll, been approved i'm oh, on my oh. way <laughs> yes <laughs> where we'll where we'll be able to thank you in person because the conference was that's that's an amazing thing kevin i've no idea what it is um but the um the conference was amazing. If you joined us for Melbourne hosting the conference, you will have seen the most amazing um, uh, production values. Like it felt like we were part of some kind of like online TV show. And as a presenter, you had like people in talking into your ear and telling you when to go. It was the most incredible thing. So well done, Alyssa, and please pass on our thanks to your colleagues. I know Jules put in a lot of work and the whole team there to, to get it all sorted. Ah, Riz, thanks for the comment in chat. It must have been 2017, um, as it was like a couple of years after that. Nice. OK, so um, we also have a host for this year's conference on the call just now, Kevin. <laughs> there it is. There it is. It's different place from Zoom. You no, know, it's funny when you said this year's conference. I'm like, no, that's next year because that's what I've been in my head for so long. It's like, no, it's this year. It's coming. Hello, everybody. Kevin Waldrop from the University of San Diego, California, and University of California, San Diego. Make sure I said that in the right order because if I didn't, that's another university down the street. Uh, I work as the assistant director in the Center for Operational Excellence here on campus with many, many other fine organizations that help do lean and continuous improvement throughout the campus. Do you want to update on the conference now? Should I wait well, for you? Let's, let, let's do that in, a, in about kind of two minutes, 33 seconds time, um, because um, if you've not yeah. seen this, on the website you need to let's show you a little bit about the what you'll what you can see for the conference in san diego we were conceived on the edge of a continent created on the edge of a country and born of the leading edge of possibility. The edge is where mountains rise, where humanity flowers, and where imaginations are fired. The edge is exhilarating. It offers an astonishing view of tomorrow, a doorway to new ideas. The edge is a good place to be, and it's been very good to us. On the edge is where hope grows, 
on the edge of change and uncharted waters is where the best of humanity can take center stage. One costume design, one algorithm, one treatment at a time. From America's finest city, where we strive for continuous improvement, we invite you to the 2023 Lean In Higher Education International Conference here in sunny San Diego. We invite you to UC San Diego, where Lean In HE and our spirit of collective impact transforms our student experience, guides our service-oriented culture, and fuels our passion for discovery. We invite you to come from around the world and discover from each other where Lean in Higher Education engages and creates a new edge for tomorrow. We invite our diverse Lean HE community to UC San Diego to connect and to use the power of continuous improvement to bring about real systemic change for a more inclusive academic environment where all may thrive. We invite you to join us in San Diego. Let's get together to learn from each other, explore lean experiences, and provide a supportive community to lead continuous improvement. You are invited. Están invitados. Vous êtes invité. You're invited. Go for it, Kevin. Yes, it still gives me chills. I love that video. <laughs> Our uh, committee that's been working on this, that we rewatch it once in a while as uh, another boost in all the planning. So welcome everybody. It's so glad to see so many familiar faces and names. Um, as the video said, on the edge, that's the theme for us because you can fill in the blank with many different endings to that on the edge of a continent, as it said, on the edge of the state of California, on the edge of the coast, but on the edge of discovery, on the edge of reunions in person again. It'll be, it will have been four years since we were together in person, so we're very excited to bring you this in-person conference. Um, it's on the La Jolla Shores at, if on the leanhe.org website, you can see this video, but below there's also a link to the facility. There's a slideshow, so you can see exactly where the uh, rooms, breakout rooms and auditorium will be. We're very excited about that. I put a link in the chat. That's for a newsletter that just started last week. Time is flying. That newsletter is your first line of defense to get the news. Um, we'll also be posting in LinkedIn, but the newsletter will always go out first and contain more information as the platform allows for that. So the website will be released in <laughs> a matter of days. It's coming up soon. It's the structure. It's a lot more information about the city, the campus, the area, transportation, uh, the host hotel, so other lodging information and transportation in April, probably near the end of April, we will open actual registration for tickets. We will also open the call for sessions. So if you're thinking about presenting, start getting that ready. It will be open for about a six week period. When it opens, we'll tell you how long it'll be open for. And those are for in-person sessions. That's one of the exciting things for us this year is everything is in person. We will be here. We'll be able to interact and share and make those connections that once we're back in our home institutions, we can rely on that friendly face um, for some advice and connection there. The, that covers all of those things. And there's the highlights for the conference covered most of those, but we're working on some activities to engage while you're here and, and actually make these connections. And then also the pre-conference activities on the Wednesday morning, there will likely be a few selections, uh, such as a tour or um, one of the rounds on our health side is coming into play. If your institution has a medical aspect to it, that would be very interesting and exciting there and a couple other uh, surprise items for that. So lots more to come. Stay in touch with us through the newsletter. 
very soon the website and we'll be rocking and rolling from there. Thanks so much. I hope to see you here. And one question in chat before you go too yeah, far. Um, how warm will the sea be? Um, I think Tracy said it might be too cold, 62 degrees, which I make as about 16 or 17 degrees Celsius. In the October month, it's interesting. There's there's a weather section on the website coming, but anyone can look that up. It shows the month of October as sunny and 80 every day. And the water is a little bit warmer, but not. it's not Florida hot wet water. It's bearable, chilly by that time. The last time I was sea swimming, it was in Shetland and it was seven degrees. So 17 degrees sounds like sounds like luxury <laughs> to me. Nice. Yeah, we're rinse in San Diego. That's cold for us. <laughs> but, um, in August, that's the only month I actually swim in the ocean and is August. And then, you know, September, October, it gets a little cooler. But for, you know, the rest of the world, it's still good to go swimming. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Cool. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Now, for those who can't travel, there is a plan. And I'll hand over to John from our European Continental Division to talk a little bit about that. But before I do, there's one person who we've not mentioned yet. Actually, two. Um, firstly, um, we uh, you we have a plan for next year, 2024, um, and 2024's conference is currently being planned by the European Continental Division, and I think it's okay for me to say, John, isn't it? Yep. The, yes. The the plan is for the conference to be hosted by the University of Cambridge. And we are super excited the, to be going to the historical, like Cambridge University, right? To look at how lean plays out in their context, but also to hear from lean practitioners around the world. So that's like super exciting. Linda is um, the the leads their lean uh, efforts for the University of Cambridge, and she can't join us uh, tonight, but she sends her best wishes. Um, and yeah. We'll no doubt be hearing more from her and also hearing more from her at uh, in, in, in San Diego. The other person who isn't here is the consummate Grace. So Grace Bryant has for the past, I think, is it? Well, since the pandemic got in the way, I'm like Suzanne, who knows what years are anymore, um, but for uh, what for for not long enough has been our director, uh, our deputy chair communications. So this is a role which looks after the, the voice, the tone, the brand of Lean in higher education and Lean HE and helps support the networks in how we communicate. Um, if you see, we've got a refreshed website. If you look at our new YouTube channel, you'll see there's the firework logos that's everywhere. That was that was some of Grace's work to really bring some coherence to who we are and how we talk about what Lean HE is. Um, and also to do so in a way which listens to you, the community. Last time we were face to face in um, Michigan, over that conference, um, Grace brought together the voice of the community to really describe what Lean HE is and has used that as the foundation for creating a story, our stories and, and who we are. Um, if you look at the, click the link in chat, you'll see our brand new YouTube channel uh, with some of the videos from the conference that John hosted in Strathclyde in 2021 starting to drop on that channel. So if you want some good lean learning, you can click on the YouTube channel, look at some of the videos from there. And as the months roll forward, we want to see this to become more of a resource. So we're hoping that some of the content from Alyssa's amazing conference will also start to roll out on our YouTube channel to create an archive of video material that uh, people will be able to look at going forward. OK, enough from me. John, Europe, go. Would you like me to talk about the um, the coming plan for the, the conference first before I do that? Go for it. Okay, so um, 
as Kevin has alluded to, um, the, the conference this year will be in person. That is going to be the, the main focus, um, which will be fantastic. Um, but what we've discussed at a lean HE global level is a way to give those that are unable to attend the conference in person the opportunity to access um, a significant amount of, of the content um, online in the following probably nine to 12 months um, following the conference. And how we're going to do that is Kevin has kindly agreed to ask all of the people who are successfully selected to be presenters um, if they would be willing to run the same session online at a future date um, for one of the one or more of the continental divisions. And each of the continental divisions, um, so Melissa, myself and Ruth, um, along with our colleagues in those divisions, will be responsible for organising a series of online um, sort of mini conferences with um, large amounts of the conference material um, as part of that. So you will get um, the opportunity to see what happened at, at the conference and some of the workshops, obviously not all and not the all the interaction in between sessions, but still a really good way to um, access the content online in, the, in the, the following months. And what that also enables us to do is hopefully record those sessions which we can then upload onto the YouTube channel. So it's that continuous um, you know, evolution of the YouTube channel and, and lots more content and knowledge being shared in a number of different ways. So we very much hope that that addresses um, the, the needs for, for those who can't, because it is difficult. You know, it, it only comes around to your continental division once every three years, and there's no guarantee that we can get the funding to go. So hopefully this is a um, a good solution to to deal with that. And, and even when it is online, when it's hosted in a time zone far away from yours, getting up at uh, four o'clock in the morning to present is fine. But, you know, um, we can't get around the shape of the planet, I'm afraid. But hopefully this way people will be able to take part in content at time zone appropriate, online, in a way which is recorded and people can then access and we'll continue to keep that archive of material going forward. Oh, brilliant, John. Tell us more. Well, I should just say, when you say brilliant, John, I must give credit. It was, um, it came, the idea came from a discussion with um, Krista Schulte from the University of Michigan. So again, another good example of collaboration, but it was all Krista's idea. So if it, if it works really, really well, it was Krista's idea. And if it doesn't work, it's, it was my idea. So there we go. Um, Lean HE Europe. OK, so a few of you on the call are from the European Continental Division. So hello once again. Very whistle stop tour of things that have been happening in Lean HE Europe over the last 12 months. Um, I was re-elected as chair. I, I'm not. I'm still wondering why they did that, but I've, re, I've been re-elected as chair for the next three years through until 2025. Um, the division has put together a new Lean HE buddy scheme, which is on the Lean HE website, um, which has been developed by colleagues in Lean HE Europe and is designed to help aspiring new and current colleagues navigate their way through their own continuous improvement journey. So I, I would um, encourage you to have a look at that. Um, we've also put together a new communication and social media strategy um, earlier on, or sorry, um, last year. Um, one of our networks, Lean HE Poland, held an online conference in March 2022 um, and is currently organising the conference this year, which is going to take place in June. Um, the Lean HE Netherlands and Belgium network, they've been having monthly lunch updates um, with really good attendance. And they had a, a session recently which which um, collaborated with Lean HE Nordic as well. Um, talking of Lean HE Nordic, they delivered two half day workshop shops um, aimed at helping a, another university in Norway to develop their continuous improvement journey with around 200 participants. Um, and then in June 22, they held a seminar um, for Nor Norwegian universities with 50 participants. Um, Lean HE Scotland 
they've had a program of shared learning over the last 12 months, um, held monthly sessions for the for the network members, and each each session covered a topic identified as a priority um, from which they developed during a, a brainstorming session. Um, and examples of that include feedback models, storytelling, and dice methodology. I'm, I've not, I'm not, well, somebody will tell me what that is, but um, I know what a dice is, but I'm not quite sure at this time of night what dice methodology is, but I will, I will, will try and find out. Um, Lean HE England, Northern Midlands, which um, Linda Spinks, who Steve mentioned, uh, chairs, they have um, created a map using Google Maps to show all of the institutions that um, are currently active in, in the local area, to which is designed to um, facilitate even more local collaboration. So that's a really good development. Um, in June 22, they had a seminar sharing experiences of delivering lean training um, in the different universities. And then in, in December last year, which I think was a, was a fantastic idea, they held a CI Christmas market. Um, so with lots of Christmas stalls, but each stall covered a lean tool. And you could go around the marketplace and just have a conversation about the, the lean tool. So lean tools, including Hoshin Canary, Escar model, Lotus Blossom, creative thinking, pick charts, prioritization, SIPOC, change cake, lots of lovely stuff. Who mentioned cake at nine o'clock in the evening? I just did. Um, lean HE England South. They held, they've held various events and um, Debbie is um, the co-chair of that, um, along with um, Angus Brown from Imperial College London. So several events have been held in topics on service design, project scoping, managing change, and they also have set up uh, their own LinkedIn group for the, for the Southern Network. Um, so I've mentioned lots of different networks. In Europe currently, we have six established national and regional networks. So that is Netherlands and Belgium, Poland, Nordic, England South, England Northern, Northern Midlands and Scotland. And we also have three emerging networks in Ireland, France and that well-known European country called Egypt. And I think that probably um, covers most of it. We've we've also got our, our, our website. No, so I'll just I'll just cover plans for the for the coming year. Um, Key activities are supporting Linda and colleagues at the University of Cambridge in their arrangements to host the 2024 conference. And part of that will be arranging a fairly, um, hopefully a, an extensive study tour for people um, to, to um, come on probably before the conference. Um, Lienici Poland conference in June 23 have mentioned, um, we are in the process of creating a European network calendar of events for 2024 to facilitate and encourage greater collaboration. Um, we are looking to expand the network into new countries and regions, and we are looking to implement um, our communications and social media strategy to, to greater effect to enhance collabor collaboration across the network. And that's me. I, 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 I have nothing left to say other than um, if you thought John was saying something cool and you might have missed it if you head to the continental division page um, it, on our on the on the lean he website and head to lean he Europe there's newsletters which contain updates for all of the stuff that lean he Europe are doing so you can head down through the pages there and I'll show you the website later now um, because John was so thorough and systematic I'm working high and hard to be kind and inclusive um, there. I hope you hope you appreciate that, Suzanne. Um, you don't have you don't have very long, Melissa, but could you give us a dance through how we are with our Asia Pacific cousins? Let's have a dance, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Just to set some context for you. So John was talking about the number of you know, networks that you have. So the Asia Pacific network is much smaller, and we're not as old. So we're sort of the, the toddler, I think, of the Continental Division. <laughs> we have about 41 institutions that join in our different events um, across, drawing from Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong and Singapore. So we're a sort of a, a smaller a smaller network. 
So last year, well, last year was all at the conference. Again, a huge shout out to Alyssa and the team at University of Melbourne. It was a fantastic event. Um, over 100 attendees, three days of content. What I loved was that the team built on the learnings from Strathclyde, from the first online that we really did, and the global festival that we'd done previously. And I think it was just a, an outstanding event. No matter which time zone you're in, hopefully you managed to jump in, in, sort of engage with the content and connect with everybody. The key thing that we try and do in our network is probably two or three online events every year. So last year we had two. Our first one was really around connections, fast friending events, helping people share what they've been working on, sharing the resources that we're all using. But we did a little bit of build up as well. So what we were trying to do in our first session in the year was around helping people build the confidence to put in proposals to present at the conference. So trying to do some professional development as well as giving us a pipeline for content for the conference. The second event for the year, we had a fantastic Q&A session with the wonderful Chris Shannon, who is also on the call, talking about his, um, his book, which he launched, which was really, really interesting. And then we moved into sort of the second phase of conference development, which is all around, well, I've put in a proposal, but how do I take my proposal and then turn it into a presentation that's engaging? So we really focused on building people up for the conference last year. We did a little bit of soft launching of a LinkedIn group, having watched what was happening over in um, Lean HG Europe, um, trying to ensure that we've got some more ad hoc ways that people can connect so we're not just reliant on the network events that we are uh, using. And we also talked about, well, how can we engage with the buddy, the mentoring system that um, Europe has launched as well. So we've got a couple of events planned for this year. We're trialling at the moment some iterations of lean coffees. So we've just launched a drop in once a month on a Wednesday for anyone who happens to want to drop in and have a bit of a chat about what they're working on. And each of those sessions will be chaired or anchored by one of our steering committee. A huge call out to our steering committee. Um, Kate from Charles Sturt, Bikram from Tasmania, Ali from Sydney, Phil from Edith Cowan, Alyssa from Melbourne. And we have just also welcomed Chris from UQ onto the steering committee as well. There's your dance. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Um, there's a couple of questions coming up in chat. Um, John, in a sentence, do we have links with USISA, which if you're in the United Kingdom stands for the Universities and Colleges Information Systems Association, some kind of basically a bunch of university techno geeks in the United Kingdom, but they're quite big. Um, do we have links with them? Do you, are you aware? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've got reasonable links into that group um, and present, presented at one of their conferences in um, November in Brighton. So, but it, yeah, could, it could be stronger, but yeah, I've got, I know who they are and I've got reasonable links into it. So I think if there's, if you want to pick up anything, Tammy with John, I'm sure you know how to get hold of him. The other question I think is probably for you, Kevin. Um, will there be a circular, uh, I, I imagine that's kind of circular economy or sustainability um, uh, track linking that with lean and continuous improvement at the conference? Those tracks are still under discussion and that is part of it so far. Yes. So we're checking. So, we're checking. You can tell Kevin works in the principal's office, can't you? He's got those answers down pat, you know, and we're checking. We'll get back to you. So I think certainly what I see is a lot of interest from our students about sustainability and environment and the way the way the planet is going. Um, so it will be interesting to see what comes out in the content. But we trust Kevin to bring us a conference and it's good that we're experimenting with different ways of delivering the conference. And I guess, and Melissa, you'll be starting to think about the conference after Cambridge when we're due to come back to Asia Pacific shores. There's a nod. No, nothing more than a nod. Just a nod. We're thinking yes. it's there. Yes, we are actively beginning to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I know. It's going to be cool. And what we hope is that people will be able to come together locally using those networks, like we see when John describes, to meet with people close to them in a way which is easy, like the um, like the the Polish network does so well, creating an annual event where people can get together 
and build their knowledge and then share that out through the lean network more widely too as people do with books we should give a shout out i know they're not on the call but a shout out to bill and to tammy of course the hoshin canary book yes am i right tammy very excited 13th of september is, is when it will be available so it's ready to pre-order already but um we we've had an amazing team of um of contributors it's it's been stunning um really proud of everyone we we ran lots of mini sprints to to get people going on the chapters um so we've applied lean thinking to to the book which is great and it's been a lot of fun working with everyone and working with bill and um we'll hopefully have a, we're, we're going to put in a, a proposal to run a session around hoshin canary and he at, at the conference in san diego so hopefully we'll get accepted and um i now need to persuade my university to send me <laughs> which i'm the, sure they will the the um the, the interesting thing isn't it tammy that the the con the conversation about hoshin canary began i think was it in a panel discussion at john's conference yes, um, out of which a collaboration in the conference grew and was strengthened um through the conference that Alyssa hosted um, and then um, it kind of continued to grow and has come out into that publication. Also, I think, is it Jitendra Singh in the States has a paper which has been published, which some of you may have contributed to. I see Chris nodding um, around the response of lean practitioners in higher education to the pandemic. Um, to, we're to still writing a research it, base. Steve. Yep. We're, yep. we're still writing it. We're hoping it will get published. Uh, I think the intent is to present at the conference and we've been targeting journals to send it to. Nice. Um, and I'm sure there are many other things that lots of other folk are doing to 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 kind of grow the community. And I'd love to hear about them. So this is the bit where I kind of want to open it up to the floor. And if anyone's got something they're proud of or something they're fun of, or a question that they'd like to ask, then come on, um, come on and just come off mute or pop something in chat and we'd love to hear from you. I'd just like to mention the amazing book that Suzanne and Camilla are um, co-editing as well around communities of practice and um, kindness and, and humanization in higher education, really important, really, really important. Uh, an amazing group of people and, um, I am the just in time girl and I know I've got a very tight deadline so I'm going on a writing retreat next week for two days and I'm just waiting for the university to reckon realize that I'm not actually an academic I'm a academic and say you can't go but I'm keeping very quiet about that so <laughs> Suzanne my chapter will be ready very soon <laughs> that's fine no problem <laughs> I, I, we, we, I we know we know how to um just in time that that's that's a good lean approach isn't it so that's absolutely fine I think it was at the conference in Waterloo. Um, Bob Emiliani challenged us as a community. He said, if you are part of the academic project and it, you have a duty to record what you're doing and mm -hmm. to tell your stories. Um, and so I think it's important that we do all these things. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. What have you popped in chat, John? Um, it's uh, um an article by um, Alinda Cockenow, who presented at the conference in 2021. Um, and her session was on critical success factors of lean in higher education across national cultures. And Alinda did quite a bit of, um, she used the session at the conference to do a bit of research. She sent out a survey to people um, who were attending the conference. And this is the output um, from it, which has been accepted by the, um, where is it? The International Journal of Lean Six Sigma. Nice, nice, cool. So, any thoughts, any observations? I'm looking at Tracy, smiling at me enigmatically. <laughs> I'm wondering where she, what's going on in those pictures. <laughs> I'm imagining, it. ah, we have a hand. We have a hand. Um, is it ah. Riz? Am I right? Yes. Riz. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Um, thank you. So um, I think we're trying we're trying something interesting. It's in its initial stages, so maybe six to seven months in. 
I have experience of working with lean from a mainstream sort of service improvement perspective earlier, but uh, part of the recovery, I got moved into a student facing role. So I'm looking after the equity and outreach. So mostly widening participation programs at ANU. And one thing we were working with was design thinking. Um, so sort of like experience accelerator, uh, how to bring in that innovative sort of models of design thinking within higher education, and then how, how to funnel that in as a pre-business analysis stage in terms of service design. Um, so when I moved to this role, I brought in that design hat with me. Uh, and so far it's working really well. So there, there are a lot of parallels where um, nuanced individualized contexts need to be explored from students. So design methodology allows a lot for that. And then we're trialing a piece of work where <clears throat> we we did an exploration for a very experiential sort of broad university based uh, piece of work just to understand the community better, the social entities in it better. And we ended up with some points of view statements. So now we're doing a trialing a work with um, one of the IT projects at ANU where we're helping them translate those point of view statements into user stories wherever applicable. So yeah, really interesting and excited to do and grateful to do this work, just bring these parallels in and across um, the application of, of Lean and how tools from Lean like creative thinking fit into it. Yes, thought to share with everybody. Nice. The last year's theme was Lean <laughs> and design and education. Um, Alyssa, do you want, do you have any thoughts? Are you going to buy Rosa coffee? <laughs> I, I was listening with keen interest. I think that. Uh... <laughs> Yes, a coffee would be good, even if it's at the next AP coffee catch up. Definitely. Yeah, can nice. be, I'm in Melbourne in a couple of weeks. It can be earlier. <laughs> I'll let you know. Sounds good. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. And there's, um, I've put in chat a link to a network, the Service Design Education uh, Network. Now it's based in the UK, um, but it was founded by uh, Radka. Um, Jean and Katie and I know Radka and Jean through being an active part of the Lean in Higher Education Network too so I'd suggest you get in touch with them and I, they're Absolutely also is. doing that book that Tammy posted in chat so yeah nice awesome. glad Thank you're you. here lovely to see you um, so What's gone really well for you over the past year? What's been really good in your lean and higher education experience over the past 12 months or so? Catch you later, Alyssa. Thank you. No, my network isn't down. I can tell people are still moving. It's OK. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've I've started enjoying facilitating things face to face again, mm. but keeping some of the learning of doing the online stuff, you know, mm. and thinking a bit more creatively about how doing that, about how all that works. But I tell you, I've started playing with some of the AI tools mm. when it comes to these things. And boy, whilst whilst these tools don't do anything that students could already do, we already had SA Mills, you know. But the the way it accelerates how you can create content online, it's 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 quite something. So I think there's going to be something to think about there on the horizon for us. But for me, I think it's um, it goes back to why what we do is so important, you know. And some of the things that I see you posting in chat, seeing the changes and process improvement going back to in-person, and there will be more changes in our sector coming ahead. And our sector will need people like us to support people to change the way things are working going forward. Um, I've got a session with, with Lego Serious Play coming up in a few weeks. Oh. It's going to be fun. I think you're doing hands-on things. And it's lovely to see new members in the steering group. Yeah, yeah, Debbie, it's cool. Mm. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Let's do the boring bit. So <laughs> you're um, going to pass on to me now, aren't you? 
Well, yeah, no. Um, so, um, Grace, thank you, we, who we are so grateful for, has stepped down as mm -hmm. um, Deputy uh, Chair Communications. That post is now vacant. So let me talk to you a little bit about that. And whilst we do this, I'll also talk very quickly through the formal business that we need to do, which is to talk about our formal constitution. So if you look on the LEAM in higher education website, our constitution can be found on the, the right hand side here. So this is the point of year where we invite you to reflect on this and give us any feedback that you have. Thanks, Rose. See you later. Um, is um, this describes our purpose, our vision and values, talks about the international conference and the kind of the, 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 the kind of the tests that we ask continental divisions apply to hosting the international conference. We also have a statement on membership, ethics and conduct, working with consultancy services, and we describe the roles that we have there. Now, in this call, I'm not going to ask you to read through that, but I'm going to invite you to and let me know if you think we need to change it or adjust it and let me know and we will we'll take all those those comments seriously you can email me on um uh, let's give you my work email address because i've got so many email addresses i can't uh, keep track of them and as colleagues know when they've tried to get in touch with me and it's been years um but what I will do is draw your attention to this row here at the bottom, which is the deputy chair governance. OK, so it might be a little hard to read, so I'll also put that link in chat if you're straining forward. Um, so this is a role which we say takes around seven hours a month with strategic responsibility. Oh no, that's not that's that's you, yeah, that's, Suzanne. That's the my one role. Below. Yeah, I mean that's a the good one. way of telling me I'm fired, isn't it? <laughs> You're not fired, no. Um, but it's the communications expert, growing the brand, setting direction around communications, coordinating messages, working across channels with local experts in our continental divisions. So, for example, at the moment, John is shepherding our YouTube channel. I would expect this role would take on looking after that. Um, Suzanne has been looking after our Twitter. Uh, channel and you might take on responsibility for that as well as looking to um, support the continental divisions with how they use the brand use sub logos so lean he netherlands and belgium uses a different slightly different branding um lean he poland has got some amazing slides they use with beautiful graphics um all those those things would link through together to this person who's responsible for communications um, they'd be deputy chair, so if I was unavailable, but them or Suzanne would step in to, to fill my role. Um, and so if you know someone who would be interested, please let Suzanne know. Is that right, Suzanne? Well, if um, if you could go through the chair of your local division, that they, they've got the job, uh, more detailed job description. I sent that out to them. Nice. Um, so it'd probably be better. I mean, you can come to me direct if for any reason... You're not sure who your your local chair is, or you don't hear back from them if they're on holiday. Do come back, do come straight to me. But you'll nice. probably want to go through the chair of your regional division. Nice. So John, Ruth, or Melissa. Nice, super. So that's the um, that's the the role there, and we hope mm -hmm. to fill that post as soon as as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, um. Anything else in terms of formal? business i think the only thing i want to mention uh, just so that we can have this um noted we as you all know we, we don't have formal membership and we don't hold any budget whatsoever so there are no finances and accounts to report that's a decision we made and um, and that means that the conference host takes on all the responsibility for the normal governance matters making sure the conference finances are managed in line with their university rules and regulations, data protection, etc. So there are formally no finances for us to present, which is what we would be expected to do at this point in the year. Um, the, the reason for this is as we are a, 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 a worldwide community of practice, we cross many different legal jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we choose our conference hosts, we align with those values and our purpose and we trust our conference host to do the right thing mm -hmm. um it also helps us manage down risk it makes it yeah. slightly difficult when it comes to membership lists 
um, which is why you'll notice we've asked your consent to share your data um, with Kevin after this uh, meeting and through the newsletter. So we pass things on that way. Certainly here in the in 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 Europe, we're all very sensitive around personal data and want to make sure we respect people's personal data. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's probably well. I was I was looking at your shine a light rules, um, Kevin. Not that I want to um, interfere with the Californian rules on 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 data, but just so that we've got an awareness of them. I think it's pretty worldwide, but they are slightly different rules. Okay. So the conference host holding all that risk makes perfect sense. Yeah, um, but also we ask that all of the members of our committees do so as part of their institutions. Yeah. So we ask that people are here representing their universities. So essentially they work to their uh, employer and that our universities actually enable us to do this. Mm -hmm. So what I would ask you to do, and I know there's not many of us on the call, but that's OK, is to thank your institution for letting you be part of this, because mm -hmm. often we forget that we work in a sector that allows us to take part in these things. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think it's a glorious thing that I can that my boss says, I am so proud of you for taking part of the Lean HE network and that our institutions still are interested in keeping a global communication a global conversation going to support how our sector goes. So it's mm -hmm. a glorious thing. <laughs> so we have five minutes left. Have we covered off the agenda, Suzanne? We have. I think we've covered everything on there. Um, if anyone's got any questions, then do let me know. Um, yes. Oh, I, I did have a quick sneaky look at the, the Tracy video. Only t it's brilliant. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't resist. Tracy, well done, Tracy. What, what, what is this video that you posted? Well, could we, Tracy, could you just play it for a moment if we got time? It's five minutes long, but um, it's a parody for the song by Sir Mix-a-Lot, Baby Got Back. I converted all the lyrics to lean, and it's now Baby Got Tools. Mm. I mean. <laughs> so we talk about mistake-proofing, Kanban, um, you know, respecting people and bully bosses and it's funny it's fun mm. i did it because it i wrote the lyrics and i was it was i was laughing every time i was writing these lyrics and um it just brought me joy and that's my hope is to bring more joy to process improvement because sometimes you know sometimes change is hard mm. so if you have I a bad we're, day we're, you now have an anthem for your car i know we we, we we need to promote this. I mean, I only watched a little bit and I just got to the baby got tools bit. I'm going to listen to it all after we finish this call. Yes, you'll love it, Steve. You'll die completely. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's such a lovely way to start ending the call. But mm. actually, I think my secret mission in my university is to bring a little bit of joy, Tracy. And... Partly that's because when people work happily, their kind of barriers drop a little bit. We connect better. Mm -hmm. We start to improve our work a little bit more easily, you know, um, and it's also because it makes my work more mm -hmm. fun. My friends say they listen to me through that door and I spend all my day laughing with people on calls. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I think it's it's right to be serious sometimes, too. Um, it's but, important. Yeah. Very okay, important. so um, let's make a farewell. Good luck getting ready for the day. Chris is off. Um, thank you all for your time. Please pass thank our you. thanks on to everybody um, that you work with. And if there's anything that we can do to help, reach out. We are a brilliant community of practice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, Debbie. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Tommy.